Good evening. I'm Greg Sharp. Our sports ticker tonight brought to you by the good folks at 1890 Initiative. Husker women's basketball player Isabel Bourne will not return for her fifth season. The Aussie made the announcement this afternoon on social media. Bourne has been a mainstay for Amy Williams' squad during her Husker career. She was a three-time captain for the Big Red, 22nd in career scoring, 19th in career rebounding. Half of the women's Final Four is set with Iowa knocking off Louisville last night. LSU turning back Miami tonight. A pair of Big Ten teams will be on the court. Maryland battling the number one overall seed, South Carolina. Later tonight, Ohio State matched up with Virginia Tech. The men's Final Four is set with Florida Atlantic set to tangle with San Diego State. UConn pitted against Miami. Very unusual Final Four. No number one seeds and no seed higher than a five making the last weekend. Miami defeated Texas yesterday in the Midwest Regional Final. Today, the Longhorns removed the interim tag from Rodney Terry. He assumed the head coaching job back in December when then head coach Chris Beard was suspended, later fired on a domestic violence charge. News today from the National Football League. Baltimore Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson has requested a trade. Jackson and the Ravens have been in contract talks for months, but there's been no movement in the last month. The 1890 Initiative, helping Husker student-athletes navigate name, image, and likeness. To learn more or donate, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now let's get ready for a full two two hours of Sports Highly coming up here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Ralston again delivers 1-2. And Andrews swings and blasts it. Deep left center field and gone. Home run, Brooke Andrews. And Nebraska takes the lead of the sixth. To the fall, the 0-1. Slider ripped to right. Hit pretty well. Ryan Mooring going back, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Max Anderson. A three-run blast to right field. And the Huskers have taken a 3-0 lead. Here are your hosts, Greg Sharp and Jessica Cootie on the Huskers. Radio Network. Well, welcome. Another week of Sports on. I hope you had a good weekend. We're ready and fired up for tonight's show. We're going to talk a little football, some women's gymnastics. Will Bolt will be here an hour or two for his weekly sit down, talk a little bit of Husker baseball for that. Uh, kind of a gray, gloomy day out there right now. It was nice earlier today. The sun was out earlier, but um, a little gloomy outside. Today. Boy, I saw what? Thursday is 71. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yes, finally, and some sunshine. A great follow for you, Jessica, on Twitter is Ken Dewey. He is a UNL climatologist. Okay. Great tweets. He's just factual about all this stuff. He tweeted out earlier today, we are done having high temperatures below 40. He says we're done until next okay. fall. He says we're almost done with temperatures below 50. Let's go. So, and he says we're starting to see more 70s in the forecast. So, Oh, my gosh. You, you that makes him. me happier. He's a good follow. Uh, so, yeah, we're getting, Ken we're getting closer. Ken G. Ken Dewey, D-E-W-E-Y. E-W-E-Y, all right. He's a UNL climatologist. I think he's retired now. I think Ken's no longer teaching, but uh, still f- obviously follows a lot of weather. Ken but. is followed, especially when he's going to bring me good news like that. And and Ken appears on our Lincoln affiliate a lot on their morning show. So okay, he's, a, he's yep. a regular guest on that morning show. So uh, so there you go. What a weekend of basketball. My goodness, so good. the men's tournament is just bizarre, wacky, isn't it? I mean, it is. Uh, it's. I put out a tweet because I quote tweeted. Somebody said that ESPN said there's 37 perfect brackets. No. I don't believe that. No I way. don't believe it for a second. I can, no. There's no way that that it, it. The only way that that is is if it was just random. Everybody did every possible scenario possible of Final Fours. That'd be the only thing is because you know I think it's an unlimited number of brackets. If you literally filled out yeah. every possible, which I, that would take you forever to yeah. do. Yeah. There's no way somebody just picked that. There is no way. But yeah, it's been fantastic, and I still think we have a, a few years left of the craziness. I mean, I, I do think at some point it will. Maybe it will level out a little bit. I just think right now because the teams are old and you have the extra COVID years and the transfer portal has been bonkers, but they're about to put some regulations on that. I just I think it might settle down a little bit, but I, I do think it's the days of being, you know, straight chalk and even even the one seeds, even before things got wild, we were seeing 16 seeds compete much better with one seeds. And I, I mean, I, I do think it will still stay competitive. There's just so much parity, but I think just the absolute bonkers of all of it will settle down a little bit here in the next few years. Last year's men's Final Four 
maybe it wasn't total chalk, but it was almost total blue blood. You had Kansas, Carolina, Duke, and I can't remember the fourth team that was there. Uh, but it was it was very much a blue blood thing. This year, the only blue blood would be UConn. And I looked this up today. This but they've blue- never made it, right? Are they? When was the last time they were in the Final Four? That's what. Okay. That's what got me going. UConn has won four national titles since 1999. Now, oh. you don't think of UConn men. You think of their women being. Right. They've won four times. To- that's more than anybody when else. When was the last one? 14. Okay. So it's been almost 10 years since UConn's won it. But they won it in 99, and they won it again like in 03, and then they won it again in 10 and 14 or 11 and 14. That's surprising to me. I'm like, you don't think of UConn, but they've got more national titles in the last 25 years than any other men's program. Wow. Yeah, and, uh, you know, and even just thinking about Miami and their first Final Four appearance, right? That's what, and then the yep. other two. So it, it's one thing for FAU to, to say that about FAU or San Diego State. But right. for Miami, you would have thought they would have been there before. Yeah. And they did win the ACC regular season. People kind of And they made it pretty that. far last year, had, a, had yeah. a pretty deep run last year. I think Elite Eight. So now the women's side has been really entertaining. And they're having yes. a few upsets, although, you know, Iowa getting to the Final Four, that was great for the league tonight. You got two Big Ten teams going. I don't think. Is it Maryland's playing South Carolina? Yeah. That's going to be really. That's going to be. But but I do think Maryland is the one of the tougher matchups for South Carolina because South Carolina is big athletic. and physical, athletic. Yeah. And Maryland maybe isn't as big as they have been in the past. We've heard Cotney talk a lot about that. But still, they're they're more of that style of play where right. I feel like they can match up a little bit better with South Carolina than maybe some other. Where teams. I think Ohio State can really play with Virginia. Tech. I agree. I, I mean, they play really good defense. Defense travels right, and yep. then they also have the ability to really score it and they have some shooters from the outside so yeah i think ohio state is a tough matchup too that one's the second game tonight they're about ready to tip how crazy would that be if three big 10 teams made the final four wow be pretty big pretty big and you know the league last year had a lot of teams get to the elite eight couldn't get that last step that last step's hard it's hard to get that last one right yep it really is get to the final four but a fun weekend for all of that hope everybody's enjoying that it'll be interesting on the men's side to see if the lack of glamour programs affects their TV numbers. It might. It really might. Although people like the kind of Cinderella story, but also people love this time of year to see the Dukes and the Carolinas and the Kansas and those games. Well, and also, too, being that so many people's brackets are completely, how many people had any of these teams? So no. maybe you you lose your interest there, too. Like, well, my teams are no longer in it. Yeah. But um, if it's going to be, I think, too, in the addition of, of social media, and then I'm get, I get notifications, too. Oh, upset alert or, oh, right. post game alert. Then you go, okay. If somebody, if you're watching something else and then you get that notification, maybe you tune in. But if it's a blowout, a lot of times I'll go watch something else. I'll go watch a different game, yeah. a women's game or, or baseball. Or, there's so much on right now that if, if it's not a close game, I'm not staying with it. I'm sorry. I'm just not with two programs that I'm just not interested in. I'm, I'm kind of with you. Opening day for Major League Baseball, by the way, later this week. Let's talk about Izzy Bourne. I, I don't think this is a huge surprise. I think she'd played her four years here. She'd done a marvelous job. And I, when I saw her post an hour or so ago, I was not not surprised by that. I wasn't either. I mean, she had the year, the COVID year. But, you know, she's from Australia, has been away from home. You have to factor in the COVID year, not just the COVID year, but also the year that was very hard to travel from out of mm-hmm. out of the country. And so her family has been limited on, on if she can get here. Her, her She has a boyfriend that I think they're pretty serious. I just, and then going to play professional in Australia, the NIL situation, I, I know that things are maybe changing, but I just, and I think for some of these players, we saw with the volleyball players last year when they were just, you know, kind of ready to be done. It, it comes to a point where you get to a, a, a stage where you're just ready to move on and be out of college and, and approach the next step of your life and be all in on that. And, you know, I don't, I don't, blame her especially being so far away from home and and wanting to be closer to her family i know her sister is done playing basketball but i think the team i think they expected this was going to happen and one of the new freshmen they have coming in is a lot like Izzy Bourne. Now, she's not going to be Izzy Bourne right away because Izzy played a lot of basketball for this this program, but a lot of the things that Izzy can do, uh, you know, being able to play inside and out, stretch the floor, all the, all those things, all the intangibles that she brings in that regard, I do think they think one of those freshmen are able to do a lot of the, those things that she's been able to do. Well, that's kind of one of the first dominoes we've been waiting for. The other on the women's side is Jazz Shelley. On the men's side, it's Kaysay. Still kind of waiting for some decision from those two. 
And, you know, I, I think the clock's kind of ticking a little bit. I would think we would know that maybe sooner than later on those two guys. And I, But I don't think Jazz... And I know she's from the same country as these, but I don't think they're attached. I don't no. think this is a package thing that if one stays, they both stay, or one goes, they both go. No, and I think, and you have to think about it, Jazz hasn't been here as long as Izzy, and so hasn't accomplished everything. I know that she's got some interests that she wants to do and, and prepare herself for when she's done with basketball that I know she's looked into doing while she's here in college. But I think the thing for you have to watch out for with Jazz is it's an Olympic year, and I think she has a very good chance to play with the Australian national team in the Olympics. And do they? I don't know how that system works. Do they want the, their players to be there in the country and and playing right there alongside that team leading up to the Olympic trials? Is it something where she can do enough here to earn a spot on that team? I don't know. I mean, I think that's maybe, and that could very well be something for for Casey too. Um, if he if he's able to make the Japanese uh, national team and play in the Olympics, I think it means a lot to both of those players to be able to. You know, Casey was on the three on three team, and yep. I know it meant a lot to him to represent his country. So it, it, that very well could be playing into the, to those two players decisions on if they want to what they want to do as well it's not just even about like are you done are you what are what's what, what all is going into the decision i think for those two you have to absolutely factor in the, the fact that they could potentially be playing for their t national team in a huge olympic year that only comes around every four years and you're not guaranteed those opportunities every four years although with the women you're you look and look how many women like sue bird played for a long time they did well for, the 30s. and diana yeah. tarasi there's a lot of of women that get better as they play and and so I you know she'll she'll have her opportunities but you just never know where life will be in four more years and so it's something I think probably that weighs on the minds of people that want to play on there and represent their their home country at an Olympics well, folks we're keeping our ear to the ground as soon as we hear anything on either one of those players we'll certainly get it uh, get it to you first interstate bank built for you learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com dot com member fdic husker football practice not today they will practice tomorrow it's open again for the media so you're going to see a lot of footage from the workout and we're going to hear from the head coach tomorrow after practice so he will make his second address to the media and there's been a handful of practices since we heard him the first time i know it was a huge and i mean a huge weekend for recruiting they had up to almost a dozen guys that were making some visits here on campus including some pretty high stars players who made their rounds. We saw them over at softball, baseball. They got to watch a practice on Saturday. Former players were back to watch practice on Saturday. So uh, a lot of positive vibes coming out of the program right now. Did you hear the Go Big Red chant started I by the, the recruits? Did. Yes, I did. I was. I did not hear that, but I did see a few of them over at softball. I know they were going back and forth, which is cool about that. Yeah. ballpark and actually that was my first time going to a baseball game the other night and i think it's awesome that you can walk back and forth between the two and when there's two going on like that you get it's kind of rare when they're both home at the same time but it was neat the other night all yeah. weekend really yeah so get get a chance to take them both in but i think what you see and it's why it's why sports that are not football want to take their recruits to football games it's why football the football staff wants to take their recruits to basketball games and it's why i mean and now there's not basketball going on but you you could still get a sense for husker nation going right. to both those games it wasn't necessary necessarily the nicest weather it was a little bit chilly but the parking but lots were full the parking lots were yeah. full the stands at baseball were full there's a lot of people over at softball too you could still get a sense of how you're going to be supported as a husker student right. athlete by going to those those sporting events well i'll be anxious to hear the head coach tomorrow how has it been going they had a saturday practice it's probably a little crazy because they had a lot dozens of former players that were back they invited them all to come and and view a practice as well so i'm sure that was neat i know johnny rogers was there eric crouch was down there they got invited and came down uh, to practice on saturday so it'll be interesting to hear what the head coach has to say tomorrow we won't have a show tomorrow night we have baseball but we will have a show thursday that's the next media availability we'll hear from a couple of the assistant coaches on thursday we're gonna hear from billy kemp the virginia wide receiver transfer 
one of the more older, one of the older guys on this football team. He's a he's a veteran guy. He's played a lot of football at the Division One level, Power Five level. And Jessica caught up with him last week. We'll have that for you here in just a couple minutes. But just a lot of positive things going on. If you just walk, you can, I, I can just feel it when I walk the concourses. Yeah, you, know? you really can. I mean, the the you can feel the buzz. You can feel the energy. A lot of good things going on. And I mean, even. Women's gymnastics. I know they're mm-hmm. excited. They're back in the postseason. That's going on this weekend. There's a lot of fun things happening. Uh, Billy Kemp is a guy that, um, you know, I have not been out to. Uh, I went out to have a little bit of practice the other day, but I go through some of the video. He's a guy that's made some impressive catches. So I think he's a guy, and again, being a veteran player that has played a lot of football is going to be a guy that the quarterbacks will feel like they can rely on and trust. It's just there's something about those guys like that that have played a lot of football and have been and are in the right spots and you can count on to be where he's supposed to be. He's going to probably be, I would imagine, a pretty nice safety blanket uh, for some of these quarterbacks. And, I mean, look what Samori Toure was for Adrian Martinez. Trey. We saw Trey Parm. Trey Palmer, Marcus Washington for for Casey Thompson. It's just when when you have those wide receivers that have been through the battles like that, a lot of times they become uh, those quarterbacks' favorite guy that they look to in a third down situation when the play falls apart. A lot of times that's a guy that you can rely on to get the ball to. And Jessica, he put up really good numbers. Yeah, he at did. Virginia. I mean, he this past year he had some injury situations, so they weren't as good this year. But you go back two years ago, he caught a lot of passes for the Cavaliers. And again, I'm not the Cavaliers are not a national championship caliber type team. I get that, but this is a guy that's performed in a power conference against the Clemsons and the Florida States and the Miamis and those teams. He has faced them in his college career. And, uh, he broke records at Virginia, right? He sure did. So, I mean, this is a this is a high. This guy's got a good resume as he brings to Lincoln, and, and I think he will be a stalwart of that wide receiver room. And you kind of needed that with Trey now off and pursuing the greener grasses of the National Football League. You needed a guy that you could kind of feel like he might be our number one guy, and he might be the number one guy. I think there's a lot of guys in there that that they're excited about that and as we've heard coach Satterfield talk about he doesn't want the same a bunch of the same wide receivers I think there's a, a different there's a bunch of different types of playmakers in that room but there is a lot of speed and I think that's been on full display and so yeah I mean but I, I think just having that reliable target like a Billy Kemp when I, it's just it's so huge for an offense to be able to have that guy that you can rely on that you know is is running the right right route going to be where he's supposed to when you need him to be there all right billy kemp also we'll hear from heather brink the oscar women's gymnast gymnast found out a week ago that they are back in the ncaa tournament they're headed to denver later this week to compete uh in kind of a regional setting out in the the mile high city so jessica's going to talk to the coach coming up in later this hour and will bolt here for his great baseball show in hour number two phone lines text lines open and available for you 402-413-2400 that is our sports nightly hotline brought to you by woodhouse where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime 18 brands a huge selection of pre-owned you can always find what you are looking for with woodhouse more of the show including a conversation with billy kemp coming up next a dui is everything you didn't prepare for you did not save for it you did not train for it you did not go to school for it you did not raise your family or buy a house or get a job for it It is not your life goal or a dream come true. You have planned for everything in your life. You did not plan for a DUI. Get a ride. A DUI costs more than you think. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. You ain't seen nothing. This is Ford Truck Month, America. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight. Like the Ford F-150 or the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger pickups. So get into Ford Truck Month and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock and ready for delivery today. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. TNL Irrigation Company knows their way around a field and across it into the corners. And even through storms, TNL engineers are constantly working on solutions producers need, like the new Gooseneck Cradle Corner System Attachment. It greatly improves corner span stability to tackle steep terrain and stand up to high winds. If you're looking to upgrade your corner system or add on new, call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com to learn more. TNL, like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. For the fifth straight year, the University of Nebraska system is a top 100 patent-earning institution. NU system researchers were granted 43 patents in 2021, with UNL researchers named as inventors on 25 of these patents. Husker patents include three projects with partners at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and six patents for a surgical robot developed by faculty in the College of Engineering. Find your next truck during truck season at Woodhouse Chevy. Whether you are shopping in store or online, we provide a stress-free, streamlined process that's tailored to meet your needs. Save during truck season and receive 0% APR for 36 months plus $1,000 cash allowance and no monthly payment for 90 days on the 2022 Chevy Silverado 1500. Find new roads with Woodhouse Chevy in store or online at woodhousegm.com. WBC, CD for details, expires 4 3 Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. You already got the hat, the jersey, maybe even the occasional red and white face paint. So kick things off right this season and add the FNBO Husker Visa debit card to the list. Pay loud and proud for every Husker decal, t-shirt, or hot dog at the game. Wear your heart on your sleeve and in your wallet with the Husker Visa debit card, free with any checking account from FNBO, the bank of Husker Nation. Get yours today at fnbo.com slash Huskers. Member FDIC. At CHI Health Clinic, we believe healthcare should be personal because knowing your provider personally makes appointments more comfortable, more productive, and more meaningful to your overall health. Get matched with a primary care provider based on your personality and lifestyle using CHI Health Clinic's My Provider Match. Take the survey at myprovidermatch.com to find the right provider for you. Getting healthier starts by getting personal at CHI Health Clinic. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, 
solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. We'll have head baseball coach Will Bull here in hour two, so get your comments, questions ready for the coach in the second hour. Going to talk a little Husker Spring football, one of the newest members to this team, one of those transfer portal additions, Billy Kemp, who put up big-time numbers at Virginia, now a Cornhusker. You had a chance to meet and talk to him last week. We were just talking he might be on the all-name team. That is a Love good that name. name. All right, yeah, here is uh, Billy Kemp uh, after practice last week. All right, well, how's it going? How are you settling in? How are you liking Lincoln? I like it a lot so far. When you made your decision, you got one more year of eligibility. It's a big decision to make your final year of college ball. What, what went into that? Um, you know, the biggest thing to me was ultimately achieving my ultimate goal is getting to the NFL and getting drafted to the NFL. So, um, you know, with the coaching staff here, uh, along with the players, I feel like this is a great fit for me. And the coaches know what it takes to get people to the NFL. And uh, we're working every day to, you know, accomplish that goal. What were some of the things that the coaches told you that you were sold on besides the NFL? Because, I mean, I know that's a big part of it, but it's got to be the right fit too, right? Yes. Um, you know, they love to, they love to compete. Um, they're coming in to win. And just ultimately, you know, knowing what it, what it takes to get better at my position. Uh, being punt returner and receiver, you know, they have coaches everywhere that will help me uh, improve on my game. So when you come here and, and you're getting acclimated with a new team and settling in, what, what was your approach? I mean, I know you're a veteran guy, you've been a leader before, but how do you go about getting acclimated in a new locker room? Um, you know, I, I first came in just wanting to show the guys that uh, that I'm here to work and, you know, I'm a hard worker. And then, you know, with these f first few practices, um, just showing them that I can actually play and, you know, that I'll have their back on the field and uh, that we can be a real brotherhood. You know, the, you, you said the work hard and the grind, and that's kind of what this coaching staff is and we've heard about since they were, were hired. How much do you appreciate that and like that, that they, they want to work hard, but they also reward guys that do get in here and do the right things? I love that, you know. Um, that's all you can really ask for in the coaching staff um, when you're out there working so hard every day, you know. Um, so I really appreciate that, and that's something else that I really love about this coaching staff. You, you've made a lot of plays in your college career, I know, but, you know, Coach Satterfield has talked about having different wide receivers and guys that can do different things. What's your perspective on, perspective on that? How important is that to have different wide receivers? You know, it's, um, it's great, and with Coach Satterfield, uh, I feel like he has a, a great offense, and um, he definitely knows what he's talking about and what he's doing. So just learning from him, and you know, playing, learning, and learning and playing under him is going to be great. What about getting uh, settled in with new quarterbacks and different quarterbacks? And some guys aren't on the field yet, but being in the spring when a lot of different guys are throwing the ball around to a lot of different players, I mean, how do you go about that? You know, my ultimate goal is to catch the ball. So whoever's throwing the ball is my job to make them right. So. Um, Seeing the quarterbacks compete has been great this spring. Uh, speed is one thing we're hearing a lot about some of the receivers, too. Uh, got a lot of fast guys out there? Yes, ma'am. What's that like, having guys that can just, I mean, why is that so important for an offense? Um, you know, like you said earlier, we just have a lot of weapons. So, um, you know, just having multiple guys that can attack you in different ways is um, always good. Being that you are an older guy and a veteran guy and with the new coaching staff trying to get people settled into a spring ball, what role do you play in maybe helping the receivers along, being that you've been through this a time or two? It's about, um, you know, just doing what Coach McGuire tells me to do, honestly. Um, if there's any little details or, you know, um, energy that I can bring into the groom room, that's what I try to do right now. And, um, yeah, just doing everything he says do and uh, showing by example. People are fascinated by Coach McGuire. Uh, tell us about him. What is he like? Um, he's a very smart guy, genuine, um, and you know he loves to work hard. Uh, so he pays attention to every little detail, and you know that has been helpful over the the spring and the winter so far. I think people talk about like, well, he's so young, but how much does that make him relatable? That he he's kind of closer in age with you guys. Yeah, he's very relatable, but. You know, I don't. I don't even think about the age at all. You know, this is this is a business here, so we're all here for the same objective. So, I mean, the the other stuff doesn't really matter too much. We're here to work. What's the goal for this offense? What do you guys need to accomplish here in these 15 limited practices here in the spring? Uh, get one percent better every day, 
uh, for everybody, including myself, just to pick one thing that they want to focus on throughout the day and work on improving in that that day and then finding something else that they could work on th uh, throughout the 15 practices. Obviously accumulated by the spring game. How excited are you to run out there? Are already all, almost 50,000 tickets sold for a spring game. How exciting is that for you to, to have that atmosphere in a spring game? I'm very excited. You know, um, I heard the Husker Stadium is you know, just a different environment, game day. So the spring game will definitely be a sneak peek of what it'll be like. If fans were just, when they're waiting to see you run out there, describe what you're like there out there on a football field. What's, what's your playmaking style? Um, I'm electric. So uh, I hope to bring some excitement and some energy to the team. And hopefully they'll do the same for us. There's some returning defensive backs that played a lot of football here. What's what's the matchup like between the wide receivers and the defensive backs so far here through spring? It's been good. You know, the competition everywhere has been really good. So I appreciate the DBs for, you know, pushing us receivers. And, you know, we'll be pushing them as well throughout this spring. Why receiver for you? Um, I like the one-on-one -on -one and, you know, to get the ball in the end zone, catching the ball. So um, that's, that's what I think I like about receiver. Anything else Husker Nation should know about you? Other than your electric playmaker? Um, I'm a man of God, and you know we're here to win a lot of games this year. So You talked about the 1% better, and then everybody else is kind of buying it. It's the same messaging. Why is it already that this, this team is buying into what this coaching staff is selling? Um, we're trying to build a brother here, brotherhood here. So, you know, um, to win games, we have to have a connectiveness and be all on the same page. And, you know, like I said, ultimately our goal is to win a lot of games this year. So um, I think that's why we're all on the same page and we're all working towards the same mission. Any other wide receivers impressing you here so far? All of them, you know, uh, my guy Josh Fleeks, Marcus Washington, and the rest of the room, we're out there working every day. Appreciate your time. Yes, ma'am. Fun getting to chat with him. I always think it says a lot about a guy when this is it. It's not like he can come here and has a, a year and then a COVID option like a Trey Palmer did. Uh, I mean, this is it. This is his last year. And so he wanted to put it all in on Nebraska and believe so much in, in what the conversations he was having with this coaching staff to come in and do whatever he can do here. I, I just, to me, that that speaks a lot about a young man and his belief in a program, the fact that he's putting everything in on this one year to come here to Nebraska. We we both have mentioned Samori and Trey. He's a different body type than yeah. those two, isn't he? He's a, like, I mean, Samori was t pretty tall. Yes. I mean, he was yep. not short by any means, and he was quite a bit taller. Now he was skinnier. Trey was a little bit shorter than Samori, but maybe, Faster. yes. And then, but I think uh, Billy is a little bit thicker, a little bit beefier and shorter. So, I mean, again, I think all three different, absolutely different body types, different receivers, but I do think there are the, there are other guys that like a Josh Fleets, I don't know how tall he is, but he's, you could tell how fast he is too. Right. He's a, he's a burner as well. And so, and Marcus Washington is tall. He is. he is a tall, long body out there to throw the ball to. So yeah, I mean, I just, I think there's, it takes all kinds of kinds and uh, in different situations. And so, but yeah, he definitely is a little bit smaller as far as um, height than the other two guys. Billy had some success in the kick return game at Virginia as well. And if Jessica, if he can be close to the production, what we got out of some more, we got it's good. That's a good thing. Well, because you lose Oliver Martin, right? You lose Trey Palmer. Uh, who else is back there? You had um, Anthony Grant would be back there, right, for kickoffs. He would. Um, who else would be back there? Tommy Hill. Tommy Hill. Tommy Hill did some of that. Yeah. So he and he was a guy that and Tommy still might. Yes, he was in punt returns, mm -hmm. right? And thought maybe, gosh, there was a few times he thought maybe he was going to turn one loose. Yep. But yeah, I mean, interview. he's definitely a guy that option back there for sure. He'll be in the mix for that group as well. Uh, I had a text question about where we are at on the spring game. Over fifty thousand now for spring game tickets sold. So we've cracked another barrier there. I I maintain people are still waiting to see that long range forecast, and if the weather's pretty good. I think we'll have a huge crowd uh, on, on and the 22nd. Don't expect there to be 80,000 because there are some construction going on. So if you're sitting there and you're waiting and you're thinking, oh, it's 70,000, you're going to be able to get in. 
I wouldn't take yeah. that chance. They may shut the door on you before that gets <laughs> happening there. 402-413-2400, the number to be a part of the program. That is our Sports Highly Hotline, brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. 18 brands, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. We're back to talk some women's gym. Heather Brink uh, talked with Jessica after they found out they're back in the NCAA tournament. They'll be competing Friday out in Denver. We'll have that conversation next. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. UNL has been awarded over $14 million by the U.S. Department of Commerce to expand robotics research and teaching spaces, part of a $25 million award given to the state of Nebraska to advance robotics research. The funding will allow the university to educate and train the next generation of Nebraska workers, entrepreneurs, and innovators for careers of the future. You ain't seen nothing. This is Ford Truck Month, America. Time to get up and get into Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 46 years straight. Like the Ford F-150 or the all-new Ford Super Duty. Or check out Ford Maverick and Ford Ranger pickups. So get into Ford Truck Month and see what a built Ford Tough truck can do for you. There's a great selection in stock and ready for delivery today. Based on 1977 to 2022 calendar year total sales. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to iian.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Road townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. SOS to the rescue. SOS to the rescue. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. 
First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. We are back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp, Jessica Cootie with you here on a Monday night. Last Monday, Husker Women's Gymnastics found out they were going back to the NCAA tournament. It's been a couple of years for them, and you were there for the, the happy moment when they found out they were in. 2019, and I think there's only one or two that were on that team right. that was able to do it. So it was a really, really special moment. What was great about this year is that they had done enough to know that they were going. It was just a matter of seeing your name pop up and where you're going to go and, and what your journey might look like. So, yeah, I got a chance to chat with Heather Brink after the team found out their uh, regional destination, which is in Denver. Well, Coach... Take me through the emotions of today and, and knowing that you're going to be called, but just how it all unfolds. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, today was really, really special. Our team has worked very, very hard to get to this moment. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just something that we've worked hard for, not just this season, um, but the last couple seasons, and to really see this kind of fru come to fruition. Um, just really proud of their commitment, their determination. Uh, we're looking forward to getting out to Denver. We've been there before, so it's familiar to us. Um, and just really excited to go out there and, and kind of show them who Nebraska is. You know, teams in all sports compete to be able to sit here and hear their name called right. on, on selection yeah. day. So for you guys in the emotion of where are we going to go, who are we going to match up with, what's that like sitting through? Uh, yeah, you know, I had my whole bracket like already kind of placed <laughs> out, and of course it was wrong. So um, we're super excited again. I just think it's, um, you know, a special moment for the athletes to kind of see their name kind of come up on the screen, uh, know that they've made it, right, to this point. We get a skip round one, so we get that bye, which is really awesome as well. Um, so just really looking forward to kind of getting back in the gym. We've got a couple weeks of practice uh, in front of us to kind of hone some of those details uh, and really just kind of, you know, compete freely. I mean, that's our biggest thing. You can count us underdogs. You can count us whatever you want. But um, I really want the athletes to go out there with intention um, to be able to compete with no pressure at this point um, and just really enjoy the moment. You guys have been peaking at the right time and, and solidified your spot in the postseason. What's gone into that? What's gone into the confidence that the, your team's yeah. competing with? The athletes have just really embraced the challenges. We have thrown challenge after challenge after challenge at them. I think, you know, strong uh, preseason for us, um, getting to the point where they just really kind of every day showed up, committed to that process, uh, paid off for us in the end. Um, you know, we, we had some really great competitions. They weren't all wins. So I think sometimes adversity early on really focuses a team on kind of coming together and it's been really special to watch that unit as a team kind of gel and be on the floor uh, and compete for each other you've been a part of teams that have made special runs what yeah, what does yeah. it take to to have some success here this time of year you know it's going to take us doing our job you know hitting 24 for 24 is is always a goal that puts us at the best situation uh, I think for us the 
the pressure's off. You know, we have nothing to lose at this moment. Um, and the pressure's more on the other teams in front of us. So for us, we get to start on vault, I believe. Um, and so we're really excited for that Olympic rotation. Uh, I think that's a great rotation for us. And, uh, you know, just really look for the athletes to, you know, just embrace it, kind of get after their landings, uh, hit their routines, and, and just be there for each other. I know you love this group. So as a head coach, how rewarding was it for you to get to see them rewarded for their hard work? You know, it's it's just been really special this year. This this group of athletes, again, I just cannot speak to the commitment level that they've done for us um, and for themselves, you know, not just us as coaches, but for themselves, for the program, uh, and really being able to watch them, you know, see their name go up there and realize, oh my God, that hard work, everything that we faced in that preseason moment really paid off. And I think that success breeds success so they're just laying a foundation for future success and um, I'm just really proud of, of of them I'm glad they got the opportunity to watch it together I'm you know it was exciting to see their joy for sure congratulations coach Thank you appreciate it go be red <laughs> so excited for that group I mean I have enjoyed getting to be around that team this year do a little bit with them called a couple of the broadcasts and and have done some interviews and uh, it's a fun group. They're young. They're really young too. Mm -hmm. uh, got almost everybody coming back. I think they have a couple seniors that have the option to utilize a COVID year. Clara Colombo is one of those, but most of the routines will that you're going to see in the postseason will be back next year. So this is a big experience yes. for these young gymnasts to go get this feel for what it takes to go compete and hit their routines at this level. Feel the pressure yes. of the moment and see if you can compete. And then so if you get there next year, you're not in awe of it. Yes, That's yeah. really, really big. It's huge. It's huge. I was telling you off air, I, I, that team really made progress as the year went along. And, and that's I look for that as much as anything. Do they get better? And that team certainly did. Oh, and they, I mean, they, their national score in our QS, whatever the saying is, it, it improved greatly. But yeah. a lot of it is, it averages like three scores from basically the whole season. But their scores, they were able to drop a couple of them at the end. Their scores absolutely improved as the season went along. Their confidence got better as they went along. They're able to build. It's what, it's literally what you want from every team, right? You want to be peaking at the right time. Yes. And this team is peaking at the right time. They've got some confidence about them, and they've just kind of come together. And now they just need to go put it all together. And, and I think they feel pretty good about their matchup. And at least we'll – so the way that it works is you'll you'll have your – second round so there's a kind of like a play-in like a the first four if you will and so they were able to avoid that so they're already in the second round of regional so if they can make it past that and and advance to sunday would be really big so they they need to finish in the top two in their, in yeah. their four that they're matching up against to be able to advance to sunday which is where they'd maybe see denver and uh, i think michigan is in that that regional too they're out there on Friday in Denver. The men's gym, they're a couple weeks behind. They've got their league coming up this week, and then their NCAs are later on. And not nearly as many men's gymnastics programs in the country. There's only, I think, right at 16 men's gymnastics teams. Hey, folks, buckle up. Put the phone down. That's a reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We're back to wrap up Hour 1 next. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Bring even more action to your drive when you purchase your next vehicle at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From dependable SUVs to durable trucks, we have something for everyone. Drive with purpose in the 2023 GMC Terrain or discover just how tough the GMC Sierra 1500 can be. Plus, receive no monthly payments for 90 days on your next GMC vehicle. Explore our current inventory in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. WBC CD for details expires 4 3 other irrigation companies are finally discovering what TNL Irrigation has known for decades. Continuous movement is the best way to irrigate. While they'll have you pay for complicated upgrades to get steady, even water application with their high voltage electric systems, all TNL Irrigation pivots and linears are propelled safely and smoothly by powerful hydrostatic drive. Continuous movement isn't new, it's the TNL standard. Don't get talked into a reinvented wheel. Pick the proven original. Call your TNL Irrigation dealer today or visit TLIRR.com. TNL, like no other. 
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a big mistake. Hey, Joe, I think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have the utilities marked before you start digging? I'm not digging very deep. It's no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Dad, the TV's out. Internet, too. Remember, safe digging always starts with a free call to 811. Oh, what a knuckle. Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Time to see what's on tap, presented by Bud Light. Husker softball tomorrow will be in Iowa City for a doubleheader. These are conference games against the Hawkeyes. Starts at 3, our pregame coverage on the Huskers radio network, 245 with Nate Rohr. You can hear that on Huskers.com or on the official Huskers app. Husker baseball in action tomorrow night at home. Non-conference game with the Bison of North Dakota State, 605, first pitch, 530 for pregame coverage. That is what is on tap, presented by Bud Light. Ron Ravel's team gets a sweep over Purdue. Great start to the league play. Husker men win two out of three from Illinois. Illinois picked right ahead of the Huskers in the standings. So that was a good start for conference play for both of them over the weekend. I've always heard, especially for baseball, really just two out of three, two out of three, two that. out of three, and you'll be good. good. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you, and, and you've said it, we've talked about it on this show a lot, is they've got really good pitchers on Friday and Saturday. So if you take care of business in those games and then you just keep Gotta plugging away that. Sunday, though. Yeah. Got to figure that out. Uh, the softball team would have won 18 or 19 of their last 22, 21. I think that's right. Yeah. So they – they're rolling right now. And I think some of the teams in the Big Ten of softball, they should take care of business against uh, and get some of those sweeps that maybe they, the baseball team might have a harder time getting. They will host Michigan this weekend. Big series at That's Bowling. Huge. And we're going to have the Friday game on the full network. So we'll look forward to that coming up on Friday night. Uh, Nate Rohr will have the call headed your way on Friday. Will Bolt coming in next hour. Uh, we'll talk some Husker baseball. If you've got a comment or question for him, you can fire off those at uh, 402-413-2400. They're almost a halftime. Maryland's hanging in there with South Carolina. You kind of called this. You thought that the Terps would be uh, a, a load for South Carolina. Yeah, I just think they match up well. Of all the, There's a lot of teams that have a hard time matching up with South Carolina, but I felt like Maryland would be the one that would could maybe pull off some kind of upset just with uh, how they're built and how they play the game. I mean, they are just physical. They press. They play good defense. And it's kind of what South Carolina does is kind of the same thing. So... And in an Good hour matchup. or so, it's Ohio State and Virginia Tech. Yes, and um, obviously Iowa already made it, and Caitlin Clark did Caitlin Clark things wow. last night. 41? Was that what <laughs> she had, 41? She's unbelievable and had uh, near a triple-double. She didn't. I fell asleep during the game, but, um, yeah, how wild would it be if three Big Ten teams make the Final Four? South Carolina undefeated, 35-0. and They're the clear favorite. I mean, obviously, yeah. defending national champs, they're going to be – uh, tough takedown for Maryland, but if Maryland were able to do it, that'd be huge for the conference. Sure would. No show tomorrow, baseball tomorrow night. Then Wednesday, folks, it is our monthly sit-down with Athletic Director Trev Alberts. He'll be here hour one on Wednesday show. So uh, put it in your calendar. Make appointment listening to hear Trev. We haven't had him in for a full hour since January. He was so busy in February. We had so many conflicts with uh, games and all that type of thing. He gave us uh, 15 or 20 minutes, but we haven't had for a full hour with Trev since January. So looking forward to Lots getting to into talk a about. lot to Lots talk about. Lots to talk about. Looking forward to that. Head baseball coach Will Bolt coming up next hour. Come on back. up on the text line text 402-413-2400 with your husker thoughts hey everyone i'm mark Wahlberg, and i have some exciting news to share at Wahlburgers, we are all about bringing the family together to enjoy a great meal and have a great time that's why right now for a limited time kids eat free every day at all high v Wahlburger locations kids 12 and under can enjoy one free kids meal with any purchase of an adult burger sandwich or entree salad 
Bring the family to Wahlburgers and the Wahlburgers and High V stores, where right now kids can eat free. When you're a fan, you wear your team's jersey on your back and your heart on your sleeve. After a win, your world glistens. Lose, and the hurt permeates your soul. You'll always have a place with us in the Cox Fan Zone, where everyone can play and connect with other fans in a big group hug. See, in the Fan Zone, you're not some crazy fan. Your home. Hey, Husker fans, this is Greg Sharp, voice of the Huskers. Say fan zone into your contour voice remote to play. Not at home? Visit cox.com slash fan zone. Go Huskers. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans.
This is the Husker Baseball Show on the Huskers Radio Network with head coach Will Bolt. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. First pitch to Josh. Breaking ball hammer to left. That is absolutely crushed. Way out of here over the hitting facility in left field. There goes the runner, the pitch. Hammered into right center field. That's a gapper. That's going to roll all the way to the wall. Carry B waved home. He's going to score. Anderson pumping for two, not stopping there. Digging for three. The relay throw is not in time. An RBI triple for Anderson. And the Huskers lead it three to nothing. The 0 2 pitch from Garza. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Four scoreless for Slim here in Mobile. And it's another 1 2 3 inning. The 0 2 pitch. Drill to left field. Going back is Jack Calvin Hewitt looking up, and it is gone. Home run. Garrett Anglin and the Huskers have the lead 4-3. to three. This pitch, Walsh cranks one to deep left center field. Hines back to the track, to the wall. It is gone. Will Walsh gets one out of here to the deepest part of the park. Shea comes set. The 1-1 pitch, little bouncer to third, Carey up with it, fires to first, in time, and the Huskers have beaten number seven Vanderbilt. Here is your host, Greg Sharp, on the Huskers Radio Network. Here we are, weekly chat with head baseball coach Will Bold. If you want to be a part of the program tonight, 402-413-2400. Huskers coming off of a weekend series victory over a good, solid Illinois team. And there you go back to that preseason poll. Your pick fifth, their pick four. So to get a win over a team that's projected to be better than you, I think you would ter- certainly take that. Yeah, and just any time you're in conference play, uh, really any weekend, you can. the goal is obviously you want to win every game you can, but winning series gives you a chance. And, um, you know, good weekend. Uh, had a couple of really good starts on the mound. Um, I think we hit nine home runs on the yeah. weekend. And, um so, yeah, solid weekend. Um, <clears throat> you know, really wanted to try to get the sweep, <clears throat> excuse me, after the uh, first couple of wins. But, yeah, it was a good weekend and, and uh, you know, good – learned a lot about our team. And I know that the, the, the final game of a series sometimes is what you got to live with for a while until you play again. We play tomorrow night. You had opportunities. You yeah. had a lot of chances. Even though it didn't get off to a good start, you still had plenty of time in that game to make that comeback. Yeah, and I think our our team realizes that, that we have that type of offense that is never out of the fight. And, you know, you're chasing six runs, so it becomes a little bit different in terms of how you can run an offense. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I thought we had some pretty good at-bats um, for most of the game. I mean, we started off, you know, really – had a chance to answer back in that first inning, and that was a tough one. You know, we had the bases loaded, and it didn't score. Um, but, yeah, uh, never out of the fight. I mean, our guys competed all the way to the end and almost got the tie and run of the plate there in the ninth inning. Three double plays. I mean, it's just sometimes that happens in baseball. The, I think that certainly ends most rallies. I couldn't tell you the number going into that game, but I'm pretty certain we hadn't even grounded it to three double plays the entire season. That might be right. Up to that point. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Kind of a weird game that way. Their right fielder made an awesome play on the ball Dylan hit. Um, Dylan hasn't hit that ball all year. I right. mean, he's, he hasn't hit that ball all year, and he happened to be there in the right spot and uh, might have saved the game for him. You know, and I, I kept waiting for him to slow down because I, I, maybe he didn't know where – I don't know that he knew he was that close to the right. wall because he hit it hard. He and did. I thought the ball was going to pop I out. I thought the ball did pop out. Honestly, it was his glasses that we saw. Um, you kind of Sometimes you kind of lose it over there where the ribbon boards are, but – yeah, he hit that wall hard, and um, it looked like the ball came out, but it was just his glasses coming off his head, I think. Well, you know, what you've been, what's been the constant for you all season long is what you've gotten from Emmett and Jace. And again, particularly with Jace, I didn't feel like he had his best stuff at all, but he found a way to get you six innings. He did, and he threw 86 fastballs Ooh. in his 100-pitch outing. Um, it's pretty hard to – to do what he did, uh, you know, facing a pretty good lineup there with just the, just a fastball. Just again, just speaks to the type of life he has on that fastball and his ability to command it. Um, it kind of became evident after the first probably two innings that it was just you know the only hard hit balls they had were on off speed pitches. So we figured we needed to stick with the fastball. And at that point in time, it, it was just. He had to be pretty precise with throwing it inside, throwing it outside, throwing it up. Um, Thought Josh did a nice job back there for him as well, getting some some of the low pitches. So um, yeah, great performance by him um, and Emmett. Both those guys really have been amazing for us all year. 
Shea had a, had a tough night earlier in the week, but bounced back, gave you two solid innings Friday, and then threw a nice inning yesterday in the game. Yeah, he did. And, <clears throat> you know, it was one of those things where he was – he was sick once we got to the Tuesday game. He was sick, and um, you know he was became unavailable to pitch uh, on Tuesday night, and um, but was able to kind of. He took a couple days after that, and really we didn't see him because he, we just wanted to keep him away from the team because it's kind of been going going around. So I think it gave him a chance to kind of just get refocused a little bit. And uh, yeah, he had he had a, a really good outing on Friday. Uh, followed it up, you know, once we got it within a couple of runs there, we figured we'd send him out there to try to get a stop because we really did feel like we had a chance to come back in that game. Coach, I was also pretty encouraged. I'm sure you were with what you saw from Jake Bunz. Yeah, it was great to get Bunzy in there. You know, he had gotten hot the day before, like he was going to come in the game on Saturday, um, and that opportunity did not arise. And uh, so being able to get him in there on Sunday and to get him up and down, that, that was big too. Um, we were really – kind of the plan was is we were going to have him throw the one inning and then he was going to come out and get the lefty. Um, but he said, you know what, let's just see see what, how far he can go. Um, we did have another uh, right-hander, Berggren, was in the bullpen if need be, um, and Bunsey didn't need him. I mean, it was good to see. I mean, the, the change up. We've seen that pitch from him. That's a pitch that's really come along. And it, before he got injured last year, that was a pitch that he had really, really um, improved in his arsenal that he had never really had before. And he had the good slider going, too. So uh, very encouraging. I know he left there feeling really good about himself, and that was a, certainly a positive from the weekend. Ben and I were talking about in 21, he had such a swag about him on the mound. He had an attitude. Haven't seen the attitude yet. And that's probably because he doesn't trust himself yet. Yeah. But I kind of saw, I thought I almost saw a little nod or two from him in that outing yesterday. It was like, he's kind of feeling he's back. Yeah, and it's understandable. I mean, he's been through a lot when it comes to injuries, and he's had the, you know, the elbow stuff. He's, he's dealt with some other stuff, um, you know, some nerve issues in the neck and some of that stuff just in the last last couple of years. So I think he has been a little bit hesitant at times to – to get back out there and just trust himself. And, you know, now now that you look at it, I mean, he was fully cleared when we started the season, and now we're, you know, a month into it. So he's another month removed from from kind of being fully cleared, and hopefully as the weather starts to warm up a little bit as well. Um, you know, he's got – he's touched 90, um, not quite some of the 93s and 94s that we saw a couple of years ago. I think it's in there. He's got a, He's got a chance to do that, but really – Bottom line, as you said, just bringing that mindset, you know, to the mound um, in those big moments because he's been there before um, and throwing the ball over the plate and just challenging hitters. Dorothy Lynch, home style, light and lean dressing, endless flavorability. Is a text for you? Kind of a technical question about bunting. Kevin in Southwest Lincoln, why do I see so many college baseball teams, including the Huskers, that still bunt with the bat parallel to the ground, holding it at a 45-degree angle would eliminate the pop-ups? What's the philosophy you guys teach your guys on bunting? Yeah, I mean, you want to um, you want to try to try to keep the barrel up if you can. Um, just as soon as you start to drop the the barrel, that's that's where you get the pop ups. So, yeah, you want to you want to make sure you do that. And a lot of it comes down to what your elbows are doing. Um, if your elbows are um, relaxed, then you have a better chance of keeping the barrel um, where it needs to be. And um, you know, so, sometimes it's just a matter of not being rushed. Um, I think at times maybe. Um, you know, we we get a little rushed with some of our attempts instead of just kind of seeing it down and then putting it in a good spot and then taking off. So, um, you know, sometimes that technique gets a little bit off when when you're a little bit rushed. But we haven't bunted a ton. No, Burnham, Burnham's been a guy that um, we've asked to do it. He's gotten some down. You know, he has a lot of attempts, so um, not always going to get him in play. Uh, certainly would like to see him be a little bit more consistent with it, but – um, Bryce Matthews laid down a nice one the other day and um, set up a, some insurance runs for us, too. Has the game changed in that aspect, and has your philosophy changed about bunting? Uh, because the game maybe's changed. Yeah, I think it's just a little bit of our – maybe the makeup of our lineup uh, this year. Um, I think – I think Brumball would have been a guy if he was healthy. That would probably would that would be part of his game. Um, <clears throat> Bryce is incorporated a little bit. You know, like I said, Casey. Um, there's a couple other guys in there that can do it. Um, but for the most part, we have quite a few guys in there that you know can drive the ball. You know, so um, maybe playing for the big inning a little bit more as well. And 
sometimes it kind of just depends on the makeup of your team. If you're if you feel like you're going to play in a lot of low scoring games, every run's really important. Um, you know, we we feel like we have an explosive team this year in terms of being able to put up some crooked numbers, and uh, so then sometimes you don't want to give give up outs when it, if that's the case. I I remember a, a coach bold a while back would always say two guys on nobody out we're absolutely by yeah. every time. Yeah, and I think maybe um, the games change a little yep. bit since then. I mean, the the when we first switched over to the BB Core bats, they were totally different than they are now. I mean, and and the the original BB Core bats and the big seam baseballs was a bad combination <laughs> for for hitters. Uh, so runs were not easy to come by all the time unless you were able to do some of that stuff. And now. I mean, I, I don't think it's there's really any debate that the ball is a lot different maybe than it even was two years ago. Um, I mean, some of the numbers, I mean, uh, I mean, there's teams that have hit almost – I mean, we feel like we've hit quite a few home runs. We're up near the top of the Big Ten. I mean, there's teams in the SEC that have 60 home runs already, which wow. is just remarkable. So the game's changed a little bit. Technology's gotten even better. Um, you know, they changed the bats originally – to lower the exit velocity, you know, 100 seemed kind of like dangerous for the pitcher. Now guys are hitting at 110, 115 miles an hour again. So we're kind of right back, honestly, where we were when we had the old hot bats uh, back in the day. Bats get tested, right, before yep. every series? What, yeah. How, how do they do that? What, how, what does that entail? Yeah, so there's a – we'll have a, you know, a couple of representative for each team that's there present, and they have like a ring test and a compression test that they can – I don't. I couldn't tell you exactly what the numbers look like, but the ring has to go around the barrel. It means that the barrel's not expanded too much, and um, there's a compression test as well. So, and they they put give give both teams a sticker. So each each team has a sticker, and you put your sticker on the other team's bat. So they have to have that on there when they come to the plate to make sure it's uh, they're properly equipped. All right, uh, some text question. Brandon from Omaha says, Coach, this let's talk about the Sunday starter position is there a point that you maybe look at moving a guy like Shea back into the rotation well there's no wrong answer there um you know at this point in time and I I honestly probably where we're going to lean is just leaving it TBA you know in terms of again the goal is to win series um we do feel like with our offense um you know on Sunday you feel like you could if you needed to, you could use an opener. You could use, you know, several different guys. Maybe just ask guys to get three out. So, it's all been discussed. It's all on the table. Um, I just think we're going to try to hammer out our top eight or nine guys and pitch them the first couple of days if you need them. And then uh, if you don't, whoever's left on Sunday. Um, you know, we've got the Tuesday games that play into that as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's all on the table. That that is something that has been discussed, but uh, you know. You, you certainly weaken your bullpen. You know, Shea's been – he's been a little bit up and down, but um, he's been part of a lot of our big wins as well. Jackson did not have it Tuesday against Creighton. Looked okay yesterday. Got, went three and two-thirds, I think, gave up yep. two runs. Probably yep. could have gone a little longer, but you went and got a righty to face a righty at that point in time. But that inconsistency makes it hard, doesn't it? Yeah, and, you know um, – yeah, it was one of those things. I mean, we're, we're trying to find another right-hander, um, you know, to kind of come put out the fire. And, um, you know, Jackson, I thought, was much better. He was much better than he was on Tuesday. Um, you know, had had a solid outing. Um, still, you'd like to see, you know, some zeros up there. I know he did get a shutdown inning for us the first inning, but a couple wild pitches, pass ball, you know, and you look up and – there's a couple runs that, that crossed the board. And um, so, yeah, it was a solid outing. Um, he's had a pretty good year to this point. But, um, yeah, we really we really kind of need some more right-handers to step up and, um, you know, some guys that can put out the fire and, and come get some, some guys with stuff. Tracy in Omaha, when's Garrett coming back? Garrett is uh, – he's it's getting closer. Um, he's – he started running. Uh, he started base running this past weekend for the first time. Um, he's still not quite shagging fly balls yet. Um, he's taking batting practice right now. Um, he's doing some light base running. So um, it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. I mean, we're not really. Um, I, I'm, it's just so difficult with those hamstrings because if you push it too soon and he and ends up injuring himself again, then you're going to lose him for the rest of the conference season. You know, and that's 
that's basically the rest of the regular season. So um, I would anticipate him having at least a pinch hit appearance Tuesday uh, in tomorrow's game. Uh, maybe an outside chance that he could DH a game this weekend. Um, and then I would really kind of look to maybe getting him back in the fold, if not the next Tuesday uh, at Kansas State, I think is where we yep. are. And then uh, and then we're at Michigan the next weekend when we get back into conference play. Tracy, thanks for the question. Mark, up in Omaha, Coach, are there players on our team that enjoy two-strike hitting? Interesting take. <sighs> Um, it's a good question. Uh, I don't know. I've never actually asked, <laughs> you know, do you enjoy hitting with two strikes? But I, I think I think our team is comfortable having extended at bats. I mean, I, I think that's what you see in some of our better games. I mean, we're we're right at about the the sixty percent mark of for quality at bats, and that's just the number of um, pitches that you see. You know, you typically a six pitch at bat or more, um, or, and, and does it end with you know either an execution or a uh, where you move a runner up or uh, you know hit a ball hard, so that's a pretty high number as a team, and that means that you're getting the pitch count up for for the pitchers at times. And um, so I don't know that there's anybody that would choose to hit with two strikes, you know, just above any other count. But um, I think there's some guys that have proven to be pretty comfortable. I think Max is a really good two strike hitter. Um, you know, he's a he's a tough guy to strike out. You know, as it is and. Um, there's some other guys in the lineup as well that, that do a nice job with two strikes. He was the one I was thinking of when I was reading Mark's question for you. His opposite field power is pretty impressive. Yeah. He hit two out in yesterday's game to the opposite field. Yeah. Um, what's he have, like five or six home runs he now? Has six now? He has six. I'm trying to think if he's pulled one yet. I, I think maybe all of them are they opposite all field, or um, if I'm not mistaken, I think they are. So, yeah, I mean, Max is just dialed in. He's dialed into that side of the field, and um, he's been incredibly consistent that way. And that's probably where they're pitching. They're living out there, aren't they, on the outside? They're throwing him outside, and he just has the unbelievable knack of being able to create some space with his lower half if the pitch is coming into him to be able to still shoot that. I've never really seen – much of anything like that, his ability to do that. Um, it's just hard to ever get him jammed because of that. So his, that's the way his swing works. That's the way his swing's grooved out. And, you know, occasionally you'll see him pull a pitch. But um, that's a real professional approach to hit the fastball the other way. And then when you get a hanging breaking ball or changeup, that's the one that you, you turn around and hit in your pull side gap. And, boy, I think Bryce is giving you a lot of really high-quality at-bats, yeah. working the counts, getting some walks, getting on base. And then he'll do something like he did Saturday, where he just unloads on the first pitch. Yeah, he, he's been he's been fun to watch. Um, just seeing him, his progression as a baseball player over the last three years has been it's been so much fun to watch. And he is such a hard worker. He's so diligent. Um, he he has been an amazing player for us and um, amazing leader for us. And I just I'm so proud of Bryce. I mean, and, and everything that he's he's been for our team. 402-413-2400. That's the number to be a part of the program. That's our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime, 18 branch, huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. More with the coach coming up. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. One of the Nebraska Lottery's most explosively fun promotions is back. Cash Blast. Until April 18th, buy a 2x2 two two ticket, enter the voucher number, and you could win $5,000 or $500. If your winning voucher is from a 7-day draw ticket or a multiple of 7 ticket, your prize is doubled. There will be 7 weekly drawings and 14 total winners in Cash Blast. So play today. You'll have a blast. But that goes without saying. 2x2 two two, top prize odds, 1 in 105,000. 
The 0 1 slider ripped to right, hit pretty well. Ryan Mooring going back, looking up, and it is gone. Home run, Max Anderson, a three run blast to right field, and the Huskers have taken a 3 0 lead. Hey, Husker fans, tune in tomorrow with Greg Sharp and Ben McLaughlin as Nebraska baseball takes on North Dakota State in a midweek matchup. Pre-game coverage begins at 5 30 p.m. on the Huskers Radio Network. Tune in to your local affiliates or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Huskers, do you want a fulfilling career that's financially rewarding? Explore the many ways you can be a part of the insurance community. Go to IIAN.org slash careers today. Business insurance is a lot to manage. Did you know a trusted choice independent insurance agent can help guide you through it at no extra cost to you? They'll do your insurance. You just do you. Find out more at trustedchoice.com. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment and only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hanna Baum with Campus News. Students in Nebraska's Rake School of Computer Science and Management created software that is saving a Nebraska e-commerce company 34,000 hours of work per year. Created by a group of five Rake School students for their design studio capstone project, this software is one of 300 real-world software solutions created by Rake School students. Pickup truck, sports car, motorcycle, minivan, townhouse, two-story, farmhouse, fixer-upper. What you drive and where you live is different for everyone, so it's important to have insurance that fits your needs and is just right for you. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that, which is why our agents help you design a comprehensive auto, home, and life insurance plan. Insurance that fits just right. See Shelter Agent Mike Shepard or Craig Kerr in Lincoln or Agent Jeff Martinez in Omaha today. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cynex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cynex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cynex. If you're driven by an adventurous heart, you're in luck. The thoughtfully redesigned 2023 Subaru Outback shares your spirit. It will take you as far as you want to explore with standard symmetrical all-wheel drive. It'll get you off the beaten path with up to 9.5 inches of ground clearance, more than Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. The 2023 Subaru Outback, go where love takes you. Comparison based on competitor information for manufacturer websites as of June 2022. Duto Subaru in Lincoln and DutoSubaru.com. To win the game, you got to have more strength. You got to be tougher. You got to be reliable. You got to want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres. They are the Midwest's premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Greg Sharp with the head ball coach. We'll bolt with you until the top of the hour, 402-413-2400 with a call or a text. Either way will work. Let's go to the phones up to Minnesota. Tim, you're up with the head coach. Good evening, guys. Uh uh, maybe I should take you off speaker. Can you hear me okay? We got you. Okay. Um, yes, my question is after those uh, first two back-to-back home runs on Saturday, is it possible that the team got a little too comfortable after the after that? Um, but still, um, I, I got to say that not only you have to get back to back to start the game, but another back to back. In the same game later, or the same uh, later in the same game is pretty impressive. And Greg, by the way, I touched the deal that guys about, but I do like them and they were also. <laughs> All right, very good. Uh, somebody else asked me that too. Did they did, did the the leadoff home runs in the first? Did you get Homer happy maybe with the guys? What did you see a change <clears throat> in the approach? Yeah, I think that's fair. I, I do, um, and I, I think I I called the team up. Maybe in the fifth inning or something. Just uh, I, I, I've seen it before. You know, just uh, you. It's, sometimes you see it on days that you know it's a great day to hit and the wind's blowing out. Um, you know, uh, which it was on Saturday. Uh, a couple guys pop home runs early, and then kind of each guy that gets up there feels like they've got an opportunity to do the same thing. And but you just got to remember that you know probably Bryce is just he's leading off the game. Just thinking, hey, I want to get a good pitch to hit and put a good swing on it, and then by and a byproduct of that is driving the ball. And so, yeah, I think that's fair. I think we did get. <clears throat> I don't comfortable would not be the word I would use. I just think maybe a little greedy uh, would be be the words that that I would use. Um, just then again, not not selfish or anything like that. I just think um, you know, just maybe a little bit too um, fly ball happy there for for a few innings, and um, you know, just. Maybe a little over aggressive as well. I uh, thought we had a chance to take some more walks and kind of set up some innings that we could have knocked down and instead chased a little bit, chased the fastball up a little bit, and that's where you saw some of the pop ups. I really thought both Saturday and Sunday <clears throat> you were so close to knocking their starter yeah. out two or three different times. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we I think we were over we might have been like 0 for 15 or something with runners in scoring position to finish the weekend. Um, I think going into the weekend, we're hitting close to 350 with runners in scoring position. Um, So sometimes that goes in waves a little bit. Uh, Sometimes there's a little luck involved with some of that stuff. But certainly on, um, yeah, you could just kind of sense, you know, the approaches weren't quite as strong as they needed to be in those situations. I mean, you start talking about driving runs in. I mean, guys that are good run producers, typically they're pretty aggressive um, early in the count. They're ready to hit. Um, you know, you got to be able to hit the pitcher's best pitches. Um, so, uh, you know, you got to be able to hit the fastball away in that situation, um, have the plate covered up. If you're of that mindset, then he, you're not going to let him get away with a hanging breaking ball. I felt like we kind of got just a little caught in between at times with our approach, um, which we've been pretty pretty good at this year, um, especially over the course of about the last 15 games or so. So a little bit of an anomaly, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I mean, we had a chance to, I felt like we probably could have scored 15 runs on Saturday um, just with another hit or two. Uh, and then on Sunday as well, I just, that, that was something that, you know, you're chasing runs early and, um, you know, you know, your goal is to score more than the other team. And um, I just felt like we left some out there, you know, on both those days. Folks, buckle up, put that phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office, Jim in Columbus wants to talk about that Creighton finish. Coach, are you still looking for guys who can come in and at least get the ball over the plate late in game situations? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of I talked about that after the Creighton game. Um, we needed somebody to step up because – 
I didn't really feel like KP was going to be at his best on Tuesday uh, because he had thrown three innings, got up three different times on Sunday, and I just didn't necessarily think it was the right situation. Um, and Shea wasn't available. I mean, Shea would have been able to pitch. He would have finished. He would have been out there in the ninth inning. Um, but he was sick, so he didn't pitch. So, um, And Brett Sears has been a guy that – He's got a good fastball, and he's thrown the ball over the plate, and that was the kind of the thought. We wanted Will Walsh to finish the game, yeah. obviously, because um, he was rolling. So we had a guy that was throwing strikes the entire game, and we were looking to let him finish the game. Brett Sears has thrown strikes. Um, he's given up some hits this year, but we just thought, hey, this is going to be the guy to, you know, throw the ball over the plate for us right here, and obviously that didn't happen, you know. So, um, so yeah, it's disappointing, but – like we talked about, I thought Hawkins did a nice job this weekend, threw the ball over the plate, struck out the side in his first inning and finished that second game with a two-inning two outing. Buns looked great. Um, I still think the best is yet to come for Kyle Perry. Um, you know, and Shea, Shea's starting to ride himself. So there's there's some some pieces there that are coming together, but but certainly we would welcome another couple of guys that, that could to be in the mix there too. we we got to talk about Will. Yeah. What a performance. I mean, and, and – what conversations were you and Jeff having late in that game? Because he hadn't pitched anywhere close to that many yeah. innings. Yeah, the the conversations were, um, you know, we, we kind of had it lined up a little bit where it's like, hey, worst case scenario, if Brockett doesn't throw well in this game, who are we going to go to early? And we we're like, okay, well, we'll go to Hawkins and then we'll hand it off to Walsh. We had that scenario ready. Unfortunately, that's what happened in terms of just not being able to, to get – a deep start from Brockett there. Um, Hawkins came in, got off the field, did a nice job. Figured Walsh would go out there and give us what he could. Um, I honestly thought he might give us six outs, you know, maybe nine. Um, but he just just kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. I think he threw a combination of probably about 65% off-speed pitches uh, in his outing. And then the fastball um, – tended to play up a little bit because of that so he was awesome it was it was a tough night to hit tough night to pitch as well just because of the temperature um and he he did a fantastic job he was a bulldog uh obviously wish he could have finished that game off um but he got up to 80 something pitches there and just was kind of out of gas looked like his velo was still kind of weird he's not a guy that blows you away no that's not his game yeah, no, I thought his his stuff was still good. I yeah. mean, it was sharp. I mean, he had zero stress uh, for all of his innings. I mean, for a lot of times that's what you look at, too. It's like how stressful the innings. Are there any 25-pitch innings in there? I mean, each inning was seemed like it was about a 12-pitch inning. Yeah. He's back in the dugout. So, you know, if we could have got him in there in the fifth inning instead of the third inning, he would have finished. finished the game. Yeah. You know? So um such as baseball sometimes let's head to the phones up to west point husker dan you're up next with the head coach hey guys how's it going this evening great thanks dan awesome hey you know coach bolt your pitching is looking a lot better i i gotta make that comment and then uh saturday netv uh aired the baseball game on tv so it was kind of cool they showed the uh some highlights of the buck and and the dog pile, and oh my God, that brought so much memory back to me because I was at that game when we beat Rice to go to the uh, College World Series. But my question to you, Coach Bolt, is, okay, when those three guys had their jerseys retired, what was going through your head and what was your, what was your feeling? I just, as a coach and as a player, I just, you know, to see that, that had to have been just amazing. Yeah, it was, and it, it just th those those three um, those three guys are e even better uh, human beings than they were baseball players, and that that's saying something because those guys were phenomenal talents uh, on the baseball field, and and yeah, it, what was going through my head? I, I just I as a father now uh, of three kids of my own, seeing their families out there on the field and their kids. Um, and the pride that they had in seeing their dads out there um, being honored like that, I, I, that that's to me is what is – is I, I love that. I love that part about it. Um, and, and also just I, kind of reflecting a little bit, um, I mean, how much Nebraska baseball has been a part of my life. Um, and obviously it's the one of the <laughs> focal points of my life now, obviously being back here in Lincoln and having a chance to be the head coach. But just – 
thinking about the fact that, you know, Shane and I came in in the same recruiting class and um, me from Texas, him from Hawaii, and, and we were roommates for, for three of our years in college. And, um, and then, you know, Alex, as soon as I got into coaching, it's like, oh man, there's this coaching thing's not going to be too hard when you got guys like Alex <laughs> Gordon on your team and that's that's uh, playing third base for you and is a Golden Spikes winner and you know get a chance to go to another College World Series you know early in my coaching career uh, and then having a chance to coach under Darren. I mean, I just all three of those guys, I've I've kind of had a chance to be um, different chapters of of my life and also just in the in the program um it, it's pretty cool to think about um that those guys um who they are what they stand for and and i, I for me just seeing their families there and the pride that they had that, that that that's what it's all about you let alex talk to the team yeah i kind of kind of told them all like hey get in there in the huddle and get the boys going a little bit so alex alex was kind of the one that took the lead on that and i know he it really got the guys fired up that he got in there and, and had a few words for him that's great Dan, appreciate it. Thanks for the phone call. Folks, it's time for the Husker Baseball Trivia Contest brought to you by the Nebraska Lottery. Your chance to receive $100 in scratch tickets from the Nebraska Lottery. We limit one winner per household during the season. Text us your guess at 402-413-2400. How many times here in this season has Nebraska had back-to-back home runs? Called a reference that earlier from the game the other day. How many times this season has Nebraska hit back-to-back home runs? 402-413-2400. We'll tell you who got the answer in first and got the right answer in first next. I'm University of Nebraska-Lincoln student Hannah Fahm with Campus News. Nebraska has taken over leadership from Princeton University in coordinating the U.S. physics community at the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. For its role... Nebraska has been awarded over $50 million in National Science Foundation grants. This cutting-edge work at the world's largest particle accelerator helps physicists uncover the origins and makeup of the universe. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890nebraska.com. Farmers can make what seems impossible reality with a little hard work and ingenuity. They find solutions to reduce inputs and improve their yield. Valley Irrigation is no different. As the leader in irrigation technology, we deliver results and optimize your operation. Because when you have a vision for the future, you need the people that can make it possible by your side. Expect what's next. Expect what's possible from Valley. Visit us at valleyirrigation.com. Woodhouse Mazda is redefining car buying. So you can shop whenever you want, wherever you want. Shop our inventory, apply for financing, and start your deal online at woodhouseplacemazda.com or woodhousemazda.com. With our lineup of new Mazda CUVs like the Mazda CX-5 or a Mazda certified pre-owned vehicle, we have a vehicle to fit the needs of your lifestyle. Our two convenient locations and our commitment to excellence make Woodhouse Mazda the easy choice. Baseball season has arrived, and your local Cynics has all your favorite snacks and beverages for the game. So whether you're hitting the road for an away game, headed to Haymarket Park, or going to cheer on your favorite local team, make Cenex your destination for top quality fuel, your favorite snacks, and service from a local smile. Fuel your fandom at your local Cenex station. Husker Pride, powered locally at Cenex. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices. 
go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Going into the break, we asked you our Nebraska Lottery trivia question. How many times this year has Nebraska hit back-to-back -back home runs? A lot of you got it right, but the first one to get it right is Annie from Norfolk, who knew that it's three times the Oscars have already done it here this year. Cash Blast from the Nebraska Lottery is back until April 18th by a 2 by 2 ticket and enter to be one of 14 winners of $5,000 or $500. Details at anylottery.com. Stop by. Top prize odds, one in $105,000. Took you a minute to figure out the third one, but you got it. Yeah. <clears throat> South Alabama. It was South Alabama. Yep. We had Karen and Fisher, I believe, went went back to back in that one. So um yeah, three. That's a two in one game too. I I I, I wanna say that there was a year that Fusilier and Ledbetter hit back to back in the same inning. Um maybe two thousand five actually. Could have been five. Yeah. Yeah. Curtis would know. Yeah, uh, Doug, also in Norfolk, uh, maybe you have stated this before. What was the reasoning for moving Max over to second base? Yeah, I, I think it was um, – I, I think kind of just seeing him there at the end of the year last year uh, and he played some there in the summer and just kind of the makeup of our, of our team, we felt like um, Dylan Carey naturally was going to be a pretty good third baseman. Um, and and Max can really turn the double play. He turns a his the pivot there at second base. He turns it really quick, and um, you know, it's just another really good bat in the lineup. Um, and having him in a position like second base allows you to have a, another corner guy that that can hit. 
and um, so I, I and I just think it keeps Max um, more involved too a little bit just in that in the middle it keeps him engaged and involved and um, you know I think at times at third base he was learning a new position as a freshman um, he always seemed to hit better when he DH'd or played first base or maybe another position um, and then you know, we kind of saw that again last year a little bit when he played first base and maybe played second base. Towards the end of the year last year, he swung the bat really, really well. Um, and I don't really know how much to really buy into the position versus how you hit, but I, I can maybe speak to it a little bit. I, I feel like I, I swung the bat better at second because I just had less to think about um, than when I played shortstop. It just could f- more focus on hitting. So um, I don't know. I just think Max is – he's a guy that um, – you know, you get him in the right spot, he fills the ball, and, you know, he's accurate with his arm on that side of the infield, and he turns a good double play. Turn one the other day that I didn't <clears throat> think was going to be a double play. I thought it was hit too slowly, but he had a great yeah. turn to get it over there and get the guy first. Yeah, it was. Text question for you, Coach. I love how you coach and the style of play. Quick question about Drew Christo. Has he changed his arm slot? I remember watching him in high school. The delivery looks different to me now. Uh, I wouldn't say he's changed his arm slot. Um, I would say there has been some tweaks to the delivery um, just in terms of um, trying to get a little more fluidity uh, into it. I think he's always had the arm strength, but just trying to get him in you know a little bit more athletic positions at times. But, yeah, I don't think there's any not been any major changes as far as arm slot or anything like that. It just, um, you know, his hands at – when he got here, too, his hands were a little bit further away from him, and it would cause some some directional issues. Um, so he's kind of tried to get a little bit, um, you know, cleaner with some of that stuff. But no, nothing that um, nothing major that way as far as that goes. Keep the calls and texts coming, folks. 402-413-2400. That is our Sports Nightly Hotline brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. They've got 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Back with our final segment with a coach next. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. To win the game, you gotta have more strength. You gotta be tougher. You gotta be reliable. You gotta want it more than the other guy. And you need a great team you can count on, backing you up the whole time. Whether it's in the field with your Massey Ferguson or on the field with the Huskers, red is the color of getting it done quicker, smarter, and efficiently. So this season, make sure you're checking out the lineup that'll get more done where and when it counts. From your Nebraska Massey Ferguson dealers. That's my neighbor, Joe. Hey, Joe. Hey, John. Joe's about to make a very big mistake. Hey, Joe, you think it might be a good idea to call 811 to have your underground utilities parked before you start digging? John, that's just for big projects. <laughs> Actually, it's for any digging project. <laughs> Congratulations, Joe. You found your electric line. Remember, safe digging always begins with a free call to 811. You want to borrow my phone, buddy? Brought to you by Nebraska 811. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall and Zone 6 in Exarbon Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com.
Go Big Red. Husker fans, this is Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. You've probably heard about NIL, name, image, and likeness, and now you can have an immediate impact on the success of our programs. The 1890 Initiative is a proud NIL company in Nebraska, and with your help, we can maximize our student-athletes' opportunities with NIL and prepare them for life after college. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics. Let's do the same with NIL. To learn more, visit 1890Nebraska.com, where 100% of your donation goes directly to Husker student-athletes. That's 1890 1890nebraska.com. Well, folks, do you want to support Husker student athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Final few minutes with the coach here on our baseball hour. Huskers in action tomorrow night at home, North Dakota State. The Bison played a weekend series up against Omaha, probably to stay here. They, man, they travel so much. They can't get a home game up there till like late April. Yeah. That'd be really hard. Yeah, um, they they have not played at home, and they've been down to Texas for I think they were down there I feel like Ever. for like ten days. So um, they've gotten hot. They they started swinging the bats really well, and um, they played a tough schedule too. So their record may be not indicative of kind of how how well they're playing right now, and you know kind of the strength of schedule uh, up to this point. So yeah, it'll be a good test. They. They won the series from the Mavericks yeah, they over did. the weekend. Yeah. Then you've got a really odd weekend coming up. You're going to fly down to Texas, go to Abilene, Texas, to play a couple of non-conference games. I know that was part of the reason why your schedule took so long to come out yeah. in the fall. You couldn't get somebody to play, and I probably you wanted to play here. We did. Weekend. Yeah, we wanted to play at home, and there was really only one other school um, that matched up from a buy standpoint that made sense and just couldn't get them to agree to come over here and play. Um, and then we offered to go play at their place, and it didn't happen. So, you know, luckily we were able to use our ties down in Texas and uh, get get a couple, find a couple teams that weren't in conference too that just allow us to come and crash the party a little bit and, you know, don't get the full three games in. And it's a little weird, you know, you fly all the way down there for one day of play. But, hey, you got to do what you got to do to get the games in. And uh, those, both those teams are – Abilene, I believe, is like 16 and 5 they right are. now. Um, and, yeah. and both those teams are swinging the bats incredibly well. They're both hitting them about 320. Well, we saw Corpus Christi yeah. here last year. Yeah, so, yeah, it's going to be going to be a couple of uh, good tests. Two-part question for you. How mm. far in advance do you get your league schedule so you know what, when your bye week is? And what about adding those two Southern California teams here soon? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the answer to the first part of the question is we don't get it early enough at times, it feels like, just because you got to fill that, that bye week. And um, I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up playing more league games. Um, I, I know the coaches would like to do that. That way you have less uh, non-conference weeks that you have to schedule. And um, we're trying to get unified as a, as a conference as well as just – this is kind of the formula that you've got to use. If you have three non-conference weekends that you've got to schedule, here's kind of the, the the way to go about that. And then if we can all get our winning percentages up in non-conference, then everybody's RPIs will go up in league play when you play each other. So um, I think that's coming as far as, you know, when the other teams are added, I think you're certainly going to be looking at maybe some interesting travel in there as well, where maybe you play both teams when you fly out there. Maybe they come out and play, you know, uh, maybe a pod system or something like that, like we saw the COVID year. So it'll be interesting. I, I just I think it's with all this conference realignment and some of the things that are going on uh, with with college athletics, it'll be interesting to see what what the landscape looks like for years to come. The pod system wasn't it. It wasn't a bad yeah. thing, really, to go to a Greenville, South Carolina, or Round Rock and yeah. get a weekend in. Yeah, um, yeah, we ho- we hosted our pod in Minnesota. Right, <laughs> it was the yeah. weekend that I think it was the third week of the season, and we they wouldn't let us host here because we don't have turf. Um, and I think it was like seventy degrees here that weekend, Beautiful. naturally. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Good luck yeah, tomorrow. You bet. Thank you. Oscars against the Bison tomorrow night. 6.05. First pitch will be on the air with pregame at 5.30. First Interstate Bank. Built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. Thanks to Cole for being run on the show for us tonight. Husker Baseball headed your way tomorrow. Have a great night. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that. 
because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. See Agent Matt Moorhead or Joanne Shamanick in Lincoln or Scott Jeffers in McCook today. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS. SOS. Looking for a car buying experience tailored to you? Start with Woodhouse, a trusted partner for automotive needs and a proud member of the Nebraska community. With 18 brands and 21 sales and service locations, our dedicated Woodhouse team is ready to provide you a convenient and seamless transaction from anywhere. Whether purchasing, selling, or servicing, experience the difference with Woodhouse, the official auto dealer of Nebraska Athletics. Husker fans, don't miss your chance to get a first look at new head coach Matt Rule and the 2023 Husker football team. Be in Memorial Stadium on Saturday, April 22nd for the annual Nebraska football red and white spring game presented by FNBO. Tickets are on sale now and are only $10 when purchased in advance and $20 on the day of the game. To secure your tickets today or for more information, 